It's a lot of ways to do wall hacks. You know, set the textures differently, all sorts of things like that. You can mess with memory. Build a little thing to watch the memory and see people running around. But I really don't do any of that stuff. So I'm just going to do to reset on the hits so we can grab that. And we're going to want the F factor uh, new collision point. We're going to need the new collision normal. We're going to need the float new collision distance. And let's. kind of get them cash. Uh, well, the, the industry for legit programming over here where I am is pretty good. Like, you know, you can go make six figures right out of college um, doing legit programming. So I prefer to do legit programming. It's, it's like legit and everything. Let's see. We're going to do, these are going to be the new collision ones. Not in Virginia. In Virginia, you starve. Oh yeah, Virginia, you're probably screwed. I'm over in uh, over in Washington State, so there's tons of that stuff. And before that, I was down in like San Francisco and San Diego, and they got big, you know, development industries there. Plenty of that stuff. They don't pay nothing for shit. They just hire Indians. Oh no. So you're getting like a whole bunch of H1B visa visa dudes taking your jabs. Uh, yeah, that's like I've always been in the game industry and. The game industry is real small and all that, but I, I, I've interviewed at places that were not in the game industry, and it seemed pre predominantly like you, like everybody in the game industry is just like a white effing male like me, right? Um, but like outside of the game industry, immediately it was just like, you know, oh hey, everybody's Indian. <laughs> it's just like crazy. It was like interviewing and like. There's like three Indian dudes, and I was like, man, we, we live like right across the street from, you know, we work right across the street from each other, but like the gulf between like the demographics of the engineering uh, departments is just, boom, totally separate. It's nuts. So it's interesting that, you know. Yeah. Well, for anti-cheats for games, usually it's hard enough just to make the damn game itself, and... Um, we do have, like, cheat stuff, um, in the bigger studios, like EA and things like that, you'll usually have a group like Chaos, um, who will go in and they'll, they'll mess with your games and, you know, do that sort of stuff, and then you usually just go buy an off-the-shelf product like Arxan or some others if you're, like, super locking stuff down, but today, most of the real games are all, like, server-side simulated games for most everything. So most of the times the people don't really care because it's all on the server code. And if somebody's going to wall hack and all that stuff, there's so much that they can do to get around and get a small advantage that at times it's just like, well, the best police for that is almost just the community itself. Because people are damn smart about cheating. It's crazy. So not too much you can do. Not Arma. Well, I... I'm not like a specialist in first person shooter games, which since it's a huge genre, there are people who just do first person shooter games. Hell, there are people who just do physics for vehicles in first person shooter games, and they've been doing that for 20 years. And uh, those people know a hell of a lot more about what you're talking about than I do. Alright, so we got our new velocity. Why? What is our new velocity set to? Excellent. So that's going to be our new direction of motion. It's going to be right here. Our move distance is going to be our our new direction of motion is going to be this guy, but our new velocity is distance should be what extra delta t multiplied by the velocity, and we'll just get the size of that. Uh, I have not used Havoc Physics. I've pretty much been using PhysX and 
most of the time that's been under the covers. Last time I touched the physics engine directly was probably back in college with PhysX. Because most of the modern engines just do all that crap for you. Like Unreal 4, you don't have to go touch the physics directly unless you're doing something very specific with it. Start position is not going to be this, it's going to be new position. Where are you, new position? And we need the collision distance. Let's actually set this, um, this will be not the collision distance, but the new motion magnitude. And then we need the the collision distance. And we'll set that to our far enough vector. <laughs> nah, man, I've been in the game industry for eight years. Um, eight years, and looks like. Fifteen days. Um, when I went to college, I went to a programming college specifically for that, and I had never done programming before. And all programming is, at least to me, is just showing up for work and doing your best, because it's always it's always something. And a lot of the guys in the industry are. Everybody's just doing their best, because game projects are always different. None of them are the same in terms of, like, the requirements and team composition. It's crazy. It's a crazy world. Everything's held together by duct tape and bailing wire. And, like, you wonder why things like, you know, SimCity, like the, the latest SimCity by Maxis and all that was such a freaking disaster when they, when they launched it. Like, but they've been doing, you know, city simulations for, you know, 20 years. How do they, how do they screw this up? Because it's always different. Oh, and you ignore your QA department that says everything's broken. That, that also really helps not get your stuff working properly. All right, so we're going to say if our new collision distance is um, less than... What are you doing here? It's like greater than or equal to? Then yeah, okay. It's basically right now, after that tangent, we are... We're jumping, we're hitting a wall with our head, and then we're like... Moving for the rest of the time, um, normal to the surface we collided with. And if we don't collide, we're just gonna move to... Move to the, the point, and we're gonna return setting sim time. Sim time is delta t. We're going to return sub delta t here because we collided with something. Let's see, I'm, I'm just getting back into this code after, you know, a day and a half of not working on it, so obviously I have no idea what the hell I'm doing now. So, okay, the sim time, we simulated the entire time. And the reason we aren't immediately returning is because we're setting our current velocity to our new velocity at the end of the method. So we need to be paying attention to returns here. We need to make sure to set our velocity equal to these things. So I can't do what I normally do. I just need to, like, sim time equals sub delta t else. So we're going to have some nested horrible crap here for a while. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come back after we get physics working because we don't really know exactly what we need to get motion proper. We're kind of have we're going to have some spaghetti code to begin with, you know, like nested bullshit all over the place. And then we'll put it back together. We'll prettify it into things like we did with the other motion where it was um 
breaking it out into functions like snap to the floor and slap snap to the floor as a point and things like attempt to mantle and all these others where we actually you know take that chunk of code and put it somewhere where we can actually figure out what the hell we're doing with it so if we don't actually This is, okay, so if we can land, what we're going to do is we're going to land on that floor after sub delta t. We are now on the ground, so the next iteration of physics, which incorporates that chunk of quanta of time, is going to use it. Um, so, otherwise, we our sim time here is actually going to be the entirety of the time, because we did not collide, so we want to return delta t as our sim time. And we want to move ourselves just close enough. And um, we're not going to stick ourselves to the ground because we didn't land. So. so it's this chunk of code right here. So in the in position equals, um, in this case, we're going to do new position plus dir. Dir is going to be the, um, the new motion direction. The move distance is going to be um, the entire distance, so it's going to be this new new motion magnitude. And we're going to subtract a tiny float from that because that will make sure to not move us far enough for collision, um, collision data to get all screwed up because of floating point math errors. So that's, that's why we're kind of pulling back from the edge. It's the plan at least. So that'll do that. Otherwise, we have actually collided with something. So how do we want to deal with this? Um, we've got maybe, we got two different situations. We either have a situation where we have maybe a, a sloping roof, so it's not too different, but we hit here. Um, so what we should do is we should continue moving. Um, it looks like kind of recursively move along this surface and so is there any situation where we like we're, we're in the air we're moving along this this surface is there any situations where we do not want to continue moving like let's say we had you know a dome as our ceiling and this is our dude if he jumps and then he's gonna start moving you know to the right we kind of want him to reach like the highest point right Or do we want him to, like, if you jumped and you still had positive velocity in the Z direction, we kind of don't want to move him backwards. Like, if there was a little thing he'd get backwards. We want him to, like, we don't want him to move down. So, I guess the direction is, like, we don't want to move your character down with a sweep. And if we do, then... He should be like falling when he's doing it. So he's moving over here and he's hitting the wall. And so we want to check if our if our z direction yeah if our z direction our our current z velocity is positive, which is straight up, then we want to stop moving along the object. So if we if we hit something, we want to check the direction of motion. If the direction of motion so yeah, okay. So we need to not move downward if our velocity tendency is still positive. So we need to so if our new velocity dot z is greater than zero, otherwise we'll do something else. New velocity z is greater than zero, what we're gonna do is well, it's, it's two checks. It's if our velocity dot z is greater than zero, and our we're gonna need to look at the the new collision normal. So we're gonna have like f vector new. Let's just do like inner inner direction of motion, And that's going to be our new collision normal rotated by our um, 
velocity in the y direction. So we're going to take that collision normal. We're going to again rotate it by the direction that we want to go. And we're going to see exactly what that means. So if our inner direction of motion dot z is less than zero, less than or equal to zero, well, equal to zero is fine. We just want to have a less than though. So if our inner direction of motion z is less than zero, so to travel along this wall, then we want to we want to stop moving along this along this object. And basically we're going to say we've simulated the entire time. So we're going to do sim time equals delta t and we're not going to move like I want to stop moving along this object, so do not continue moving. Alright, so the new velocity dot z is greater than zero. Um, so what we're going to want to do there is we want to continue moving along the surface. And obviously what we're going to do here is we're going to have a loop that um, does this for a set number of iterations. Because we don't want to just chunk, 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 chunk all over the place. So it's going to be like a continue with our, with our loop. It's going to be like move along the direction of, of motion until we hit a collision and stop. Until we hit a collision or run out of delta t. So if our new velocity dot z is greater than zero, I mean less than zero. So we are we are here and we're moving downwards and the normal is downwards. Do we want to keep moving along the surface or do we want like our natural falling to bring us in here? So we sw we swept and what we're going to want to do is we still want to keep moving to the right, but like if we ran into something like this on the wall we wouldn't want to like move off the wall, so basically what we want to do is there's another check here to see if the wall is vertical, and if the wall is vertical, um, basically if the wall's normal is, if the direction of motion along that wall in these in the y-axis is not in the same direction as our direction of motion, um, then we're going to have a problem. So what we want to do is we've got our normal, so it's like our new collision normal. Um, well, we've got our direction of motion. So if our direction of motion dot y, if the sign of the direction of motion in the y direction is not equal, so that's f math sign of the inner direction of motion does not equal the sign of our um, new velocity dot y. So if it's in the the opposite direction, we will. Well, this, this actually needs to move us right here to the new motion magnitude. It's not actually, it's going to be the new collision distance. So we need to move to that location um, where, we, where we ran into that thing. And then we're going to need to like recursively call this or in a loop call ourselves again to move ourselves along the surface normal. Um, for this one, it's going to be the same where you're going to... We're going to move to the point of collision along our new motion direction and do that. Otherwise, what we're going to do is well, we want to do this anyway. It looks like what we want to do, regardless of any of this stuff, is move to that point of collision with our with our sweep. So regardless of what we're doing, we are definitely moving to just shy of the point of collision and then we can get rid of this copy pasta 
So we set ourselves to the end position, the end position, and the end position plus the new motion direction times the new collision distance minus a very small amount. Yes, that looks correct. So if our velocity is greater than zero in the z direction and the inner direction of motion, if our new direction of motion is less than zero, then we are not going, we're done moving. Otherwise, we are going to continue with the loop. If our sign of our inner direction out motion is negative to what we want to do, then we're going to do the same thing. We want to um, we don't want to continue. We have to stop moving on this object. So. Otherwise, um, what do we want to do here? We've moved to the point of collision. We are going to want to continue traveling along this wall until we actually hit something. So we'll, we'll continue sticking to the wall, it sounds like. We may actually need a stick to ceiling function here. Like, this is like the direct thing that we're doing with moving along the wall. Except, we don't want to like do reverse mantling with moving along the ceiling, do we? Do we? The reverse mantling would be like if we had something like this, and you hit your head right here, um, and then you swept out over in this direction and didn't hit anything. The mantling code and if this was the floor and you flip this upside down would actually have gone and like figured out like oh we can put you right here so we're gonna just have you nicely stick to the ceiling anyway even though you bumped your head I don't think that's gonna be too big of a deal though like it's a big deal with the ground because like if we have collision scenes and crap like that then you know it's just get up and over it but in the air you know we don't really have that much complex collision stuff for our air platforms where this is gonna just like cause absolute hell with us making the game so I don't think we have to worry too much about mantling that's the plan and I'm sticking to it so what we're gonna need to do here is um, we're going to do a do while loop here, and we're basically going to be saying, like, um, while we have dt to work with, so, like, float dt is going to be, like, extra delta t. We're going to do, like, while dt is greater than, like, min sim time. Where are you? And um, let's also do like, uh, you know, iterations is less than, and then we'll have like an end here for like max, max ceiling travel iterations. And let's just set that to 10. And we'll of course do a plus plus right in line here just so we'll confuse the hell out of ourselves later and break all of our crap because it's always good to have inline side effects in your in your conditional checks it, it kind of gives you something to do later when like you, you thought you were done with something and then all of a sudden you have like some awful bug and you don't know why and then you remove a couple conditional checks and everything works and then you just and then you give yourself a nice surprise there when Everything's completely screwed because you're an asshole and threw side effects and conditional statements. Actually, took down the production servers on Dragon Age Legends um, when one guy didn't see that there was a like if remove on a on a hash map. It was like a con a, a connection manager basically, which would say like if the removal of this thing was succeeded, like you would normally have like if this thing contains it, then remove the object from the map and close the connection to the client. This thing was, you know, 
we had written it so it was like if rem you know just if remove this from the map then do this thing because remove would return true if the object was actually inside of the map so the guy like just took the conditional statement out um, and all of a sudden we didn't close any connections on our servers and within you know 10 minutes all the servers in production had ghost connections to clients that no longer existed that weren't closed and all of a sudden you're <laughs> you run out of file handles on Linux and boom production's down you get paged at 3 in the morning and uh, you're still drunk because you guys had like beer Friday and you gotta fix it so you roll over to the office at 3 in the morning and you know you forgot your badge the security guard is like do I really want to let this drunk server engineer into like fixed production? Um, and of course, it's always good to be banging on glass doors at three in the morning while while wasted. Um, so of course they let me in because they knew me. This is not the first time that I was drunk banging on a glass door trying to fix production at EA headquarters, um, and we fixed it just by reverting the code and pushing it to prod, and then falling asleep at our desks. That's that's what you do when you're doing legit server work. Or maybe that's just me and everyone else has like normal stories, normal things that happen in normal work environments. Seems fucking boring to me though. Alright, so at the start of this loop we are going to set our collision points and vectors and all this fun stuff. We are then going to do something like this. So we're gonna do our we're gonna do our basic collision hit test. Let's also throw that at the top there. So if we didn't, then sim time is delta t and we're gonna break out of our loop. So we've moved our entire distance. We're good to go. And that's fine. That'll get us out of the loop so we can chunk this thing out of here. So, um, we have collided with the ceiling. So let's move along it for as far as we can. So the thing here is we're going to need to know how long we actually simulated for this next step. Which is a good question. And the length of time is going to be. It's going to be extra delta t times this, which is wrong. Um, this is going to be dt times the new velocity size. The new velocity is. We're not going to change our velocity. We've already added in the entire sim time for the gravity at the beginning because we're faking. We're faking the physics so we're gonna that's the new motion magnitude and in order to figure out how much time we're gonna do like um, our actual time simulated is going to be DT multiplied by the distance we traveled divided by the distance we were supposed to travel so it's gonna be the new collision distance divided by the new motion magnitude. So the distance we should have gone is going to be the actual simulated time. So we're going to say like dt minus equals this actual sim time. And that's going to give us the dt that we have left. Um, and we need extra delta t to kind of stick around so we're going to just leave it alone because we're going to need to set our final simulated time to oh, what we simulated. So our end position is going to be our new collision distance. To, by that we will set ourselves to that position and then we are setting um,
Let's make sure. So extra delta t should be the same if we get to the end of this thing. We've simulated everything. We should just be like setting sim time. The only time here that we want to worry about is if we actually hit the ground. So if we So why don't we just do this iteratively right now to start with. And we'll clean it up later once we've got the code written. Um, so DT is going to be that. In DT simulated, we're going to have like actual time simulated added to that. And at the end of this while loop, we're basically sim time equals actual time simulated. It's going to be DT simulated um, plus the um, sub delta T. So the time we simulated to get to the start of traveling along the ceiling, and then we're going to add in all the little DT simulation steps that we actually took to travel along that ceiling recursively, or not recursively, but iteratively. Okay, so. Our end position then needs to be set. And we're going to check, is our new velocity, are we heading in the positive direction? So why don't we just do, if we're heading in the positive direction and our inner direction of motion Z, inner direction of motion is going to be this, this thing, is less than zero. So we're heading up and the inner direction of motion has us heading to the left. So we hit something that's taken us to the left. Um, some time is going to be delta t, and we're going to break. Of course we're going to overwrite that real quick, so we should just do... It's going to be sub delta t sim time equals See if there's an easier way to write this. I'm trying to. See, if we want to break out of this loop. The simulated delta t is going to be the whole thing, so we're just adding dt simulated. So I mean, I guess we could just say like sim time is extra delta t, which is that, and that'll just work. So we can just do that. So the other thing is, if our if our velocity is well, do we ever want to move in the opposite direction of our velocity based on this movement normal? So, irregardless of this other check. So that check right there is saying, so we're going to draw our U, and we are moving along this vector and we're colliding with something all the time. If the sign of the motion, so the direction vector is going to be this direction and our velocity is in this direction. will be fine. So the only time this would be different is if our motion was saying you should go in this other direction. Um, is there any time ever where we want the player to actually do this? They have, they could have negative velocity so they're falling down. Do we want them to fall down and to the left when they're holding right? I think the answer is very much yes. So, so this is just if our velocity is in the positive direction. We never want to go the wrong direction. The you know the, the, the direction the player doesn't want to go because they still got velocity. But if we're falling, we need to kind of 
move them along the ground irregardless of which direction they want to go because we haven't been able to land on this surface and we would have landed on the surface already correct um, maybe that's something we should be doing with every step is seeing if we can actually land on the surface we're colliding with when we do the sweep yeah so we definitely should be doing that um, So we should throw a check in here. Um, we need to see if we can land on this new this new collision point or not. So can land is going to be if our velocity dot c is this and our surface normal dot c, and then if can land then. So we'll clean this up, of course, later. So we're going to have, like, landable. So if our new velocity is this and our surface normal, in this case, it is the new collision normal. So we're just going to say, like, and we're going to break. Because we're on the ground, so the sim time is going to be sub delta t plus delta t. Um, DT simulated is going to be fine, so we just want to break it looks like. The, the time here is already set with DT simulated. And the floor stick distance is going to be... Looks like DT right here is going to be what we want. Or is it? It's actual time simulated new position is not correct it is end position so if it's landable we'll snap to the floor and we'll break out otherwise we set our position cool that works um, so we will if we landed on something when we moved over, for some reason there was a little lip or something and we just kind of got right on top of it up here, then we'll just be on the ground and continue moving on the ground, not a problem. So, what are we going to do now? So, we've set our position. So this should only happen if the velocity is z. So I'm just going to continue this with the exploding of a few of these if statements. So more code or whatever, but whatever. So. So we are heading in the negative direction. Um, let's say gr greater than or equal to, to zero. So the sign of our direction is not matching. Um, so we are headed... Well, we're headed down. So if we're headed down and we can't land on this thing, we definitely need to head along this. It's if our... We only have this. If the sign of our inner direction does not equal that sign, then we're finished moving here. Um, otherwise, it looks like we still have to continue moving along this thing. So, okay. So, if our velocity is less than zero. Don't allow ourselves to slide in the opposite direction the player wants if we still have control. So 
so is there anything so we're moving we're moving moving either along the wall here up or we are moving down in which case we're still moving along the surface of the wall we've collided and we want to move farther so if we're falling uh, we want to continue moving along the surface I think uh, regardless so and I think that's the same thing as moving up so at this point really all we're doing is we are setting we're calculating we're setting new position to our position we're basically doing this We've already set our position, haven't we? With internal set position right here at end position. So it's basically new position equals end position. And we are calculating our new motion direction. And that's going to be our impact normal. And uh, we're just going to set this like so. So it's going to be new collision normal. Motion direction is going to be that. And our magnitude is dt times new velocity dot size. dt's already been changed, so we should do that. And then we'll just continue with our motion along the wall and the ceiling. Is that it? Is that what we got? I think that's what we got. That might be air movement. This coding stream brought to you by Monster Blue the energy drink because Monster Red sucks and we have more Monster Blue. So let's drink that. So, what do we look like? And we can't set our velocity, is what it looks like when we're moving. So we need to actually do our air controls, is what it looks like. And you know, yeah. So we need to set it so we can actually move left and right when we're in the air. So we're applying gravity, which is fine. So. Basically, we're taking our current velocity and we're doing all the things. So what we want to do is, if we are in the air, um, currently we've got it so our biped movement controller thing is basically saying like we want to set our um, wanted velocity in this direction, and our wanted velocity is 3,000. So what we want to do is we want to give you some air control and the air control is we're going to disregard the z-axis wanted velocity and we're just going to care about the y-axis wanted velocity so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the we're going to calculate that vector so f vector the wanted velocity addition well wanted velocity We'll just say is m wanted 
velocity uh, dot y well, we're basically taking a vector we're just doing like this is going to be 0 1 0 Water velocity is going to be this vector. Uh, multiplied by the sine of the, uh, the y. So, unwanted velocity dot y multiplied by the magnitude of that one. Unwanted velocity dot size. So, that'll give us our kind of wanted velocity direction. What engine would you use to build a top-down Diablo-style game? Unity or Unreal 4 or whatever else? Well, it depends entirely on the scope of your project. Uh, how many people are we talking about, Nightfall? Because Unreal 4 has, I think, a lot of stuff stacked against it if you're doing smaller game development. You'll, you'll have to give me a little bit. Just you and a freelance graphic designer. Thank you for hosting, Karakan. So if it's you and a freelance graphics designer, um, what's your target platform? Are you going for the web? Are you going for phone? Yes, hello, Karakan. Are you going for um, like a Xbox Live Arcade or or something like you know PS4 stuff? Or you just PC, Windows, or Mac, or whatever. Because the first thing is like, how many people? Alright, so just PC, Steam, and all that. Well, I would definitely say use something like Unity probably would be simpler for, for doing that. Um, a top-down Diablo-style game, usually you have sprites moving around um, with an, you know, an isometric camera. Um, so you have an orthographic camera basically on top, and you draw all your sprites in ISO, and then you're moving them uh, around on the grid, and you're you know depth sorting all the sprites in order to actually draw them nicely on the screen. And Unity would probably work pretty well for that, even if you know everything was a 3D object as well, that could work just fine. Um, I would say I would not use Unreal 4. Um, for that, unless you specifically had another reason to use Unreal 4. Um, and there are a few reasons that you would want to, like the material editor and everything else for Unreal 4 is just amazing. It's great. Um, maybe you want to learn Unreal yourself, um, because it's a better marketable skill right now, I think, if you're going to be doing PC and Steam development and you want to get a job in the industry or you want to return to the industry. Unreal 4 is probably going to have more jobs um, because a bigger studio, bigger studios hire more people because, well, they're bigger. They're going to have more people. They're going to have more positions open. So I would, I would say if your marketable skill desire is higher than your I want to just ship this game desire, then you could use Unreal 4. Otherwise, Unity should work just fine. Um, Easier to get started. Works better for small teams. Um, Unity kind of sucks with large teams because version control. Um, otherwise, the Unreal 4 is just a monster. You got to do a whole bunch of stuff to get started, and there's just more to it. So it can be a bigger pain in the butt. So hopefully that answers your question and is satisfactory. But um. That sounds that sounds uh, pretty good. Uh, two people working on a, a smaller Diablo-style project. RPGs are actually really tough to do, um, especially as a small team. There's a hell of a lot of content for you guys to write and create. Even like assume everything's done, right? Some big problems you're probably going to run into are 
well, like if you're using sprites, it's going to be collision detection for um, which sprite should draw below another one. Like, it's real simple. If your sprites are all the same, like if, if your sprites are all square, and um, you might notice this if like Diablo 2, etc. Um, they really kept it like so all the sprites on the screen are square, or at least their collision is square. So you can't get into them because if you have a like a rectangular sprite. You got like a, a rectangle like this and you know in this rectangle is you know like you've got a bush that's that's here oh oh god my bushes are horrible graphics will be 3d instead of 2d all right that's all right that simple simplifies all the things um So yeah, um, Unity should work pretty well for that. I mean, the 3D stuff is, is good. Um, their animation system should work just fine. Their collision system should be real simple because you're not doing a whole hell of a lot of collision um, precise detections. Like, you're not going to be making bar Dark Souls style stuff. You're probably going to do your collision detection in like a tile grid. Or an analog whatever thing, you know, bounding boxes and spheres and castles, that should be real simple. Should be pretty good. 3D camera on there. Yeah, I would definitely use Unity for that. Um, I don't know if it would work, but you'd have to probably spend another 30% of your dev time um, working on it. And then you'd probably have more compatibility problems than with Unity. And um, I did do a project in Unity um, before I started working on Dashkin. So if you need any stuff to bootstrap you off the ground in Unity, like I can, I might be able to help you out with some of that. No one else wanted to answer it. <laughs> that sucks. What? They didn't have an opinion. They're not. They're not willing to go on record and you know be like, I'm an idiot. Yes, I would do this and screw the haters. Um, but if you need some code in Unity um, and all that stuff, you can hit me up. Just send me a PM or whatever. And Because um, there's a lot of things that kind of suck, like especially if you want to do like Xbox controller input on Unity and if you want to have like local multiplayer and have multiple controllers in Unity, it would be a real pain in the ass setting it up properly. You'd think input would be like good in games, but it's not. It's like, I just want to know if the left axis on the Xbox controller for player one is in a direction. Can you please make that simple? And it's like, no. None of these engines make it simple. It sucks. So. Thank you for following Nightfall. Making, making the channel super popular with all the, with all the awesome people that follow. Let's see. Let me see if I actually have a build of the piece of crap game that I was noodling around with. It's like Project One. It's not there. If you think it's doable for someone who has only been coding in C-Sharp and using Unity for three weeks, but have been able to code character movement, enemy AI, working along with attacks and skills, very basic particle effects. You've got the health and MP working, you use skills, get attacked and dropped. Well, anything's doable. Um, and I've usually find, found that more experienced developers, people who have more time working on games and things like that, tend to make games slower um, because they're caught up in like me writing things correctly and that can I can actually make it more difficult to make projects so I would never say inexperience with a system or with making games is a bad thing in fact you can do things um, because you're gonna make you're gonna make bad decisions but it's not gonna stop you from getting things done so you might run into like a problem much later where like 
everything is all sorts of screwed up, but you're going to have a game. So it's just important to get in there and do it. So if you're like, I don't know if we can do it, be like, just, just do it and fail. And um, you'll learn a hell of a lot from it. And if you do it and you succeed, well, then it doesn't matter anyway because you succeeded. So, and if you got real problems with getting it done or something, you can always just make it in 2D and make it in JavaScript and throw it in the web or something. Well, it depends. Like, if you're going for, like, actually making money on a project like that, like, I'm going to base my livelihood on delivering this project. Um, it's been very clear to me over the past year of, or less than a year of indie development, seeing my friends make games. Like, some of my friends, uh, one of them released Pixel Sand recently on Steam. Uh, one of the other ones has a Dino Walk simulator game, which he released on, like, iOS and all that, and... He's trying to get it all up on VR for Steam. And even if the game is good or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, if you don't have like a big name behind the game or marketing budget, the chances of you making making money off it are not very, very good. Um, you could have the best game in the world, and it's not, it's not going to sell because nobody knows what the hell it is. Um, and you've seen... You know, there's some really good examples of games that came out of nowhere, no IP, doing very well. You know, like Rim World and some of the others, where you'd be like, you know, somebody look at that game and be like, hey, 2D people moving around on a colony simulator? This is stupid. I don't like this. But it's doing great. It's doing great because they built a community of people to do the marketing. So you don't have to know what the hell you're doing to be successful. You kind of just have to have a game. It has to not suck. Um, actually, it can still suck. You need to have people who want to play it. And then you've got to actually make it. $10,000 is basically nothing. Um, if, you're, if you're thinking in terms of that small, then... Then I'd say... You know, it's like... Um, when I was with Dragon Age Legends, and uh, we had to make the decision to shut down the project um, after it had run for years, and we needed to, you know, basically put it into maintenance mode. And you know, we got we're at EA, and we're, I'm on I'm at Bioware, and we're talking to this guy, and the chief financial officer from EA comes and he says, "Well, the reason I'm shutting down your project is because you asked for another month," and I can't say yes and I can't say no to that like I can't say yes to that because there's no good way to okay you'll be putting more money into it eventually well long story short basically if you're if you're gonna jump and do something give yourself measurable um, inflection points where you can critically evaluate what you're doing like if you go for you can't basically say like if the game sucks next month we're going to pull the plug on it. Because it's not long enough. You need to be like, if the game sucks in six months, then we'll pull the plug on it. Because that's enough time for you to make decisions and um, stuff to play out. So, I would say, if you're unsure but you want to do it, do it. But make sure you have some very critical milestones in there for yourself where you've given yourself enough time to actually get work done. And then, you know, self-evaluate. Be like, is this working? And if it's not working, don't be disappointed because you've learned so much. So allow yourself to make mistakes. As my college professors have said, you don't learn anything by sitting around doing what you already know. You learn things by getting out there and taking risks and failing. If you're not failing, you're not doing it right. You need to fail at what you're doing. Uh, to put this in perspective, when I left Amazon to start working on Dashkin, I had enough money to um, basically hole up. I, I was able to go and like buy a house for cash and I've got enough money to go for years and years 
um, without anything, and um, that just takes all the pressure off. I can develop without like worrying about the monthly bills because as just.